Hi everyone, Cece here. Welcome back to my channel. In a previous vlog, I've shown this uh, notebook cover that I did with alcohol inks and a lot of you have requested that I show you how I did this. So I'm going to give you a quick tutorial. Just keep in mind that I am not an expert with alcohol inks. This was just me playing around and I remember having a few... What? frustrations I would say so I'm gonna try my best to show you what I did and I'm gonna try my best to improve on what I did at the same time so just be patient I I have to mention that the black lines you're seeing of course these were added afterwards with a marker so only the colors was done with um, alcohol inks and it is done on Yupo paper. Yupo paper is plastic. It's essentially a sheet of plastic. It's very durable but it does take to a lot of medium. I know that I have seen uh, Patty Tolly Parish use it with watercolors and uh, she's done some fantastic job to it. So you can use watercolor on this. You can use paint of course acrylic paint. But uh, today we're going to use alcohol inks. I have my inks here. They're all by um, Tim Holtz. All right? They're these little bottles. And I also have an alcohol blending solution. Uh, I'm running out, so I went and got another one. They changed their bottles. There's no... that. There's still... Um, I'm going to show you the difference. So it used to be like a spout like this and now it's just a hole. So I'm not sure how this is going to play out because I thought that the spout was kind of necessary. So I'll have to figure something out. Uh, I just wanted to mention also if you don't have alcohol blending solution, you can use uh, iso, um, isopropyl propyl, propyl? <laughs> <laughs> alcohol this is a 99% one I think this is the one that works the best but you can use like 70 I, I forget what the other percentage is but uh, this is the 99% one and I have a brush that's dedicated to my alcohol rubbing alcohol um, so I keep it with a rubber band on my bottle I also have some medical gloves because it's alcohol inks it's stained but it's also not not very good for your skin. I also have a couple of sheets of my old uh, craft sheets. These are non-stick but uh, the good thing is that the alcohol inks won't stick to it as well. Uh, this is just to protect my work surface. One will be so that I can deposit my bottles when I'm working and the other one is to catch the drippage because I'm going to be dripping of course. And then I have just a, a paper towel. Alright so let's get going. What I'm going to do is use a full sheet I'm going to remove it from the pad. Uh, Yupo paper is a little on the pricey side. It's it's kind of like a matte plastic. It's quite interesting. You know what? I think I'm going to cover my whole surface. I have a larger craft sheet. I'm going to go get it. It is stained from the previous time that I used it, so I didn't bother cleaning it. To clean it, you can use rubbing alcohol. I'm going to grab a little bit with my brush. See, you can just like remove it by rubbing it. You can use your alcohol blending solution, but honestly, uh, the blending solution is a little bit on the pricey side, so I'd rather just use alcohol, uh, rubbing alcohol for this to clean. Anyways, you get the gist. I'm not going to bother cleaning the whole thing, just because I know that I'm going to dirty it. <laughs> So I'm going to start by choosing a color combo. Um, I do have other things. Here, let me show you. I have this pen. This is an alcohol ink fillable pen. It's again by Adirondack and it does work in conjunction with the alcohol blending solution. It's essentially what's inside here. It's refillable as it says. Uh, and there's two tips. There's a fine tip and a brush tip. Um, this I'm not sure what it does. I had it in there in my stash, so I'm gonna I'm gonna try it out. I think it was bought with the intention of using it with alcohol inks, but I'm not sure. I there are other techniques that you can use with alcohol inks, where you put a piece of felt to a block, and then you just like add the alcohol inks with the block, and it creates some cool effects. But today I'm not gonna do that. And there are several. Uh, tutorials online for this but today I'm just going to drop the color mix it in with the blending solution and that's really all that I did my 
color combo of choice <laughs> are these red pepper aqua stream and butterscotch all right so to do the circles you kind of have to act quick because the liquid has a tendency to spout as soon as you tip it it will want to come out and so to do drops <laughs> see you kind of have to press on the bottle as perpendicular to your paper because you saw this here this I like as soon as I tilted the bottle it started dripping what you can do is you can drop a second color in these circles they don't have to be circles by the way it can be whatever you want but I like to drop circles and you see how the first color will repel the second one here and of course I added quite a bit so the butterscotch is kind of like overtaking that red pepper okay now I can do the same kind of effect with the alcohol blending solution and again oops it's very quick <laughs> it charges very quickly it's like pew, it wants to come out of the bottle like super super fast here I'm gonna do one in that red see how it just repels it and it moves it which is pretty cool and by the way do this in a well ventilated room if you can okay so I'm gonna drop a couple here and this is the aqua which is much lighter I can drop some aqua in here which is cute oh look at that that's pretty okay and then what I can do with my brush I'm going to dip it and I'm going to drop this in here so you can see that the circle is more precise you can actually target where you want to drop the alcohol I'm gonna get a small bowl and I'm gonna fill this in with the alcohol. I don't need a lot. I just didn't want to dip in my bottle because it was difficult to get at with the brush. What you can do as well is use the brush to drip. So I'm gonna add a little bit of alcohol to this and it's gonna start moving that color downwards so with the brush of course you get a lot more control and at this point what I want to do maybe is add a little bit of that yellow to that stream it's going to turn into a beautiful green and I can guide it look at how it reacts this is so cool and I have no plans as to what this should be, by the way. I never do. You should know this by now <laughs> about me. You can even paint with, with your brush, you know, if you want to make like marks. Look at that. Kind of like coffee stains. Add a little bit of red here. Right? Introduce like some fun shapes. I've done on one of my... Um, other book covers that um, that I have I've done some dots so you know a little goes a long way of course I have a lot of alcohol inks um, I have a lot of rubbing alcohol on my brush right now uh, so the circles are going to keep expanding so for that purpose I use the alcohol uh, ink fillable pen I use the fine tip and what I can do, and let me zoom in, I'm just trying to show you all the tricks that I use and then I'm just going to work on this painting, I guess you can call it. So with the uh, fine tip, you can make much smaller dots. And don't forget that it will keep, the, the, the blending solution will keep on moving the ink around, okay? So even when you add the, here, I'll show you. I'm going to try because it's kind of like an overhead view, but uh, when you dot, you just touch it and then see how it expands. 
I'm going to do another one here. So I'm just going to touch it and see how it keeps on moving. And then if you want to get it bigger, you can just leave it longer. Right? And of course, I have a lot of ink here as opposed to here. So it requires more of that blending solution to move it. So that's essentially what I did when I did my book covers. Ooh, I love these colors. Look at that. Wow. <laughs> that makes me happy. Okay, so I'm going to add a little bit more of that stream color. I'm going to do a little bit of that lighter. This is aqua. I love to mix the both of them together. I think they're fun. Now, if this is going in a direction that I don't want, I usually tip the paper and I will, you know, add a little bit of rubbing alcohol to it to make it go down. Let's say I want it to drip. See how I can get it to drip. This is so cool. And there is no end to this play, um, this play time because you can just keep on adding and adding and and removing and adding some more. Look at this. I mean, I I already like it. I think it's so cool. All right, I'm going to put uh, more of that butterscotch here, which is the yellow. I love to mix the stream with uh, butterscotch. It creates such a beautiful hue of greens. And I'm going to drip. If you can spray if you want, I tend to shy away from spraying because I don't like to spray alcohol unless I really have to. And because I'm going to be working on this for a while, I personally would rather not spray. Alright, this needs... <coughs> I had to close the window, by the way, because it was so noisy on the street. I live on a busy street. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to have to reopen it. Okay, I want to see what this red and stream will do together. I'm going to... Ooh! <laughs> oh, yeah. Tap your brush. This brush is... Uh, instrumental to to this oh look at that it's almost like an eggplant color oh I like this I like this okay let's drop in some butterscotch in here just for kicks and giggles see how that's gonna work yeah baby oh wow see happy also there's metallics I, I have some but I've never really had uh, good results with the metallics I find that they don't move the same way as the inks um, and um, they tend to clog up an area which I don't like so this is so so cool and again you know don't forget that as long as the ink doesn't dry, it will keep on moving. So just apply and then wait a little bit.
I can even paint with that, with my brush, you know, like this here. I can sort of expand on that color if I want to, make it a little bit more spotty. I can do the same here. I can take that red, turn it into a pink. Cool. I can do the same thing here, actually. Hmm. Fun, isn't it? See, as soon as it dries, it stops moving. I have played with this way longer than I thought I would. I need to let that dry. I need to go and uh, breathe some cold air. <laughs> and um, I'll be back. I have kept strips of my previous project. And I want to test out some markers. I have pulled out all the ones that I actually own. And I know one brand will definitely work because this is what I have been using for the uh, first ones that I've done. But uh, I'm going to reserve those for the end. I have uh, here four brands that I have in my stash. So I have the Faber Castell, the Pit Artist Pen. I have a Copic Multi Liner. A micron pigma micron by Sephora and this is the Prismacolor premiere so I'm going to swatch them uh, that's right so this is the prism whoops <laughs> prisma color I want to make sure that I get into an area where there's uh, quite a bit of color this is the pit whoops pit Artist pen. Then we have the Copic multi liner. And, oops. The Pigma Micron. Okay, first, uh, all four of them write on the, on the, uh, over the alcohol inks, no problem. But I want to see if they're going to rub off. <laughs> all four do. Okay, <laughs> so they all rub off. The ones that work are these. These are the Micro Perm by Sakura. And I've got the 05 tip here. And so I'm going to write over this. Okay. They don't rub off. So so far, only these that I've tested actually do work and don't rub off. I'm suspecting there might be others that I have not tried, but as I've said, I go according to what's in my stash and these are the ones that uh, work. They write on any type of surface, whether it's um, porous or non-porous and no, I'm not sponsored by them. Right, so let's get on with the doodling now. In here, I want to do a tiny heart in the middle. Then I'm gonna make a little circle. It doesn't have to be perfect. I'm gonna double up that line and then I'm just going to do just straight up and down lines. Um, as I've meant, you've seen me do this quite often, as I've mentioned before, I do love that type of work. 
it's to me it's zen it's my therapy my, almost like meditation like i want to say and so i don't mind doing that but if you want to keep it more simple you can do that you don't have to follow what i'm doing in fact i just uh finished a series of small paintings very basic paintings for my patrons and i demonstrated how you can actually do pretty paintings with basic shapes and very little embellishments and still look quite classy so because i don't mind doing that type of work of course that's you know my favorite style but like i said it's not the only option that you have for sure i'm kind of hurrying up here and whoops I'm off frame too. It's going to be very difficult for me to doodle in front of you. <laughs> uh, just because I like to get close to my work. And I want to show you up close. And then when I zoom in like this, I keep forgetting to move the paper around. But you get the gist, right? So what I can do with this one is do kind of like a swirly swirly in the middle. Like so, and then I could I don't want to take away from the beauty of the alcohol inks either, but within that circle, I have this line that drags in here, and I'm not crazy about it, honestly, so that's why I'm filling that in with patterns. Alright, and then I could circle these dots and then put two in between, like so. I'm sure you guys can come up with your own um, doodling patterns. I know there are doodlers out there. <laughs> I know. And my dots are different in sizes and I really don't mind. It does not have to be perfect. Do a little flower in the middle. Kind of like a five petal flower. No more than that. So technically this area here could be like a whole bunch of leaves all together or one giant one. I don't want to do a giant one because I think it's going to be problematic when I want to um, when I want to cut this piece. So I'm going to divide that into three. I think I'm going to do one here and then a longer one here and then maybe another one here. So uh, I still have the O1 tip. Let's start with this, and then if I have to uh, graduate <laughs> to a larger tip, maybe I'll do that. So I'm going to cut across it here. I hope you can see that. This is not a marker. This is, by the way, alcohol inks. Um, I didn't want to do those jagged edge, though. Okay. And then I'm going to do a vein in the middle here. And bring the line out like so. All right. So um, right away, I can see that this is not thick enough. So I'm going to have to reinforce that. And I'm sorry if you can't see my, um, I was going to say my brush strokes, but if you can't see me actually doodling, it's because I need to, I need to hold the pen perpendicular to my piece, otherwise it doesn't write properly. And because I have an overhead camera, you can't really see it. 
until after the fact, so I do apologize for that. And here I want to have a split in the veins, just to add a little bit more detail. It doesn't exactly make sense, but yeah, that doesn't make sense. <laughs> That's okay. I'm going to start another one right here. And this one I'm going to give this kind of like a wave and I'm going to follow what's over here. Right? And then of course the middle vein is kind of going to follow this. And then I'm going to have the other veins go this way. Alright, and I'm going to do the same. I'm going to add some weight to these intersections, lines, I'm going to grab the 05 uh, just to add a little bit more weight to this right here to separate it from the other leaf. So kind of like creating a shadow underneath. This tip here, okay. There we go. All right. I let this piece dry overnight. Um, I had to take a break. Something came up and I can tell the difference now. There were some parts that were a little bit sticky. So I would advise le letting it dry for maybe 24 hours if you're patient. <laughs> I have this beautiful blooming happening there and I do want to turn this into a flower and this one is going to be a little bit more intricate.
I'm done and as you can tell I've already split them apart I'm not crazy about this part so that's why I cut it off at first and that might have been a mistake but I will do something with it um, that flower is not does not match with this part here so if I use the flower on its own maybe on a card front or something it could be interesting and then the rest also could be interesting on their on its own but I do like these two parts um, show you from up close I love this one I love all the flowers on this one uh, there are not enough leaves for my taste but I didn't want to fill everything in it's already busy with a lot of colors but I really love how this one turned out this one was fine um, I loved this flower but I kind of split it in two I like the leaves on this but um, maybe I should finish off maybe I should like doodle inside these <clears throat> three circles but uh, for now I wasn't quite sure how to handle them so I just left them on their own this looks like an avocado <laughs> But uh, yeah, this one is by far my favorite. I really like it. So this is definitely going to find its way on a notebook, uh, traveler's notebook size uh, booklet. So I hope that the video was helpful to some of you that are a little bit shy in using uh, alcohol inks. And to those that are more experienced than I am, and if you have any tips to share, please feel free, leave them in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. Thank you so much for watching and I will see, see you later. Bye.